Hello everyone. I want to introduce you today to Maggie McMillan. She is a personal branding and style consultant. Right. <laughs> you need to go onto her Instagram, Maggie McMillan, because um, it's wonderful. She has been during lockdown posting well, virtually daily. I did just, just about every day during lockdown until about two weeks ago. Yeah. So we're not in lockdown anymore. Maggie's had COVID and I, for various reasons, have just had a test and I'm COVID negative or whatever it is. So that's why we're a little close. Okay. Before anyone says anything. <laughs> before oh, anybody writes in. Yes, before anyone writes in. Please, please, please. Anyway, first of all, I want to just focus a little bit. I want to talk about lockdown because I know that um, post-lockdown, many people are sort of more nervous than they were during lockdown because during lockdown it was simple wasn't it we knew where we were we weren't allowed out bang end of so. now it's that little steps out and one of your friends might be more brave than I another. think that's you hit the nail on the head it's about expectation yeah. when we were all in lockdown we could all stay at home yes. nobody could go out and everyone was the same yeah, and now yeah. it's well if I'm going to go somewhere are they going to be not so careful as me are they going to think I'm a stick in the mud because yeah. I want, want to take my own cutlery yeah, exactly and it's not knowing what's, what's not expected it's, no really, I, I, I agree and so so what I want, want to talk about for, first of all I mean here we are both of us looking very colourful and dressed up and I well certainly I have not been like that in lockdown I've been wearing anything but and so it was quite exciting today to put on <laughs> something sort of more uh, exotic no I've been different have really. you what have you well I started off and I think I started off like lots of people do, yeah which is tracks in bottoms and actually I didn't have a lot I just had gym kit and I started off wearing gym kit it was quite a novelty because I usually have to get quite dressed up and then um, I decided actually I was feeling a bit flat and I then started recording my videos every day which meant yes. I had to get dressed up and I had to put my makeup on yeah. and I realized how much better that made me feel I agree and I think lots of people started off in their tracky bottoms and then after a while thought actually do you know what I've got that wardrobe full of clothes I don't know when I'm going to wear them. I might as well start wearing them now. And the sun came out too. Absolutely. So that and really the helped. Made the weather difference. made a big yeah. difference. And we did want to just, I don't know, reflect that I think so. Sunshine, I think so. You know? And I we, we so. all started getting a bit of a tan. And it was just, it was just, you know, it was, dare I say it, I, I did enjoy lockdown. Not, I mean, obviously some people have had a terrible time. You yourself got ill. People have lost people. But for those of us who, who just to, just the actual thing of being in lockdown and appreciating where you live. Yeah, I think that's um, made a big Slowing change. your pace yeah. down. It was. It was. It's like it'll never happen again. I mean, here we are in Henley, and normally it is a nightmare. Yes. A few weeks, yeah. you know, thousands of people, regatta, festival, and mm. then all the other sort of knock-on events following. And we've just had sort of this peaceful thing. So. I think we have been truly blessed. Yes, we have. Because been. of where we live. Yeah. Um, and I have quite limited outdoor space and I have to say I was even very glad of that and I, I think that people who didn't have outdoor space have realised how much they yeah. they miss it and how important it I is know. and I think people will use our parks and our open spaces a yes, lot more a lot more and I yeah and I think that, you know instead of going maybe to the gym they'll, they'll do a bit of their exercise Absolutely. outside, outside. Yeah, lots exactly. of people are doing it outside so did you miss shopping on the high street as such I did mean, i miss shopping or, or you an online shopper i do both i mean I, I shop i shop in real life in department stores and the high street and locally with my clients so that was a big change for me because yeah. obviously we weren't doing that and so i did miss that because i missed that contact i think but i've always shopped and done a bit of online and a bit of real life shopping. What I miss about um, not going into the shops was not being able to feel things. Yes, you know, I agree. not being able to feel things and not being able to, for example, if you go into a department store, you can see something in I don't know in one department in the Reese franchise bit and then you can see another bit in another franchise that might be mint velvet or whatever yeah and you can see you can, you sort can of compare, and get, compare and, yeah. them together whereas um, when you're shopping online you've got a sort of website yes and that's what I did do and what I did discover and I think lots of other people have have discovered loads and loads and loads of 
um, small businesses who sell clothes and accessories and who would normally be at a whole series of fairs around the country. Yes. And they've all upped their game online. They, a lot of them have sites already, but they have such a mixture and it's all from different places and they all buy from different places. So I, if I was going to shop, I tended to do that more online than actually in a high street store yeah. uh, online or a department store yeah. online. Well, well I, uh, we often promote, at about, no, later than this, about sort of August, we start to promote a fair called the Early Early Christmas Fair, which is in aid of uh, soldiers and their families. Mm. And that's at the end of September, that hence its name. Mm. But this year, obviously, it's not going to happen. And they are creating an online yes. uh, Christmas so fair. So many people, yeah. Where, so you'll get, I think it'll last over four or five days. And obviously, you'll get the discount that you mm. would normally get if you went to the actual fair. So, yeah, I agree. I think people are having to think outside the box and adapt. But on that, you talk a lot about, uh, you just talked a lot about department stores. Now... Do I know, talking to people that friends, people, our followers and things, that department stores is something that is making them a bit nervous. And so I wonder whether the small, as we used to call it back in the day, boutique. Yes. You know, isn't that one for old... Independent retailer. Yes, independent retailer. Now. Small business. Yeah, small business. Whether they are actually going to thrive. I hope so. Don't you think? I think they will, and I hope that they do. I think what's interesting is, I saw something in the Daily Mail last week, which was, which was saying that the department stores, you could always go to a department yeah. store and get a personal shopper, yes. most of the department stores. But now they're actually doing that virtually as well, yeah, which interesting, is interesting. Yeah. Um, which is great, and it's a great option, and it's a one-stop shop. However, I think, if I may say so, if you're shopping in the department store, um, those the, 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 the shoppers are there to sell you things. Yes. I mean, they do have targets. Yeah, exactly. And um, I think, I hope we'll go back to that going into your high street and people knowing you and, you know, knowing what size you are and knowing the kind of things that you like and having a much more, com having an experience. Yes. Uh, do you remember they used to, so the small uh, shops would phone you when something came yeah, in. Yeah. And look, it is to sell it to you, obviously. Of course. But it makes you feel very special. It does. And But I just hope that they really start to find yeah, their I own so. you know. I think I think they will I mean I think the department stores are being very good and they'll remain they'll always they, they will always remain because it's a one-stop shop and I think also interestingly some people are intimidated by, by going yeah. into a small boutique or small shop because they feel they may be pressurized to buy and I think it's down to um, the retailers to think about that and make them feel welcome and take a step back so they yes. don't feel overwhelmed. That thing where you came in and uh, and they said, you know, can we help you? And you didn't, you know, you didn't really want, you just wanted to look and then Absolutely. they stood there sort of, you felt when someone's they were kind judging of following you, yeah. you around. And, yeah. and also judging the way you yeah, look, exactly. you know? Exactly. Um, that, but that's always been a problem I and think I think so. people who train their staff not to be like that, I think allow so. people it's, it's a happy medium, they have to yeah. sort of stand back and say listen, if we can help just give us a shout. The only thing is though with this, you know, as from um, well, the 24th of July this, uh, that you've got to wear a mask mm -hmm. and you know, small shops can only have a certain amount of people in do you not think that that's it's going to be a killer in a way for to for because, atmosphere yes because you know you sort of that word i say said to somebody the other day you can no longer say i'm just looking because there might be somebody standing outside waiting, waiting to come to in <laughs> in the rain who is definitely going to buy and you are like oh it's you know, browsing it you feel browsing guilty that browsing. word yes and that's and, yeah and yeah. also touching um yeah so um, i quite like it when there's that balance of a shop has an online presence so yeah. you can go on exactly. and look i mean i'm going to say me and them because you know i'm a big fan of me yes. and them and i'm wearing me and them today but they are um they've got a service i'm sure lots of shops are doing this where you look online and you choose the things that you think you like and then you can go into the shop and they arrange for you to be there yeah. and you can try them on i think that's the way forward i think that's the way it's, forward yeah it's but like booking a slot of it, is. Card, it is it is actually but you know and it's a very special experience and they can give you a 
a, a glass of something or a, yeah. a cup of coffee um, and, and as, I mean, you won't feel rushed. I think that's the ideal, if they can find a way to do that. Um, but, you know, just to go back to what I said about these in, the, these, these um, independents that would have been doing the fairs around the country, I have to say, um, lots of them have Instagram accounts and from their Instagram accounts, their business has yep. gone mad. And do you know what I called it at one point during lockdown? I called it um, cheer up clothes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yes. I, I was saying to people, be careful, you know, don't buy, you know, coronavirus couture, be careful, don't buy too many cheer up clothes yes. that you're not going to, to wear. wear at a later stage yeah. you know but that was because you feel a bit down on that do you not think that people are, are starting to change have lockdowns made them change their style a little because um less going out clothes and more i, th I think it has clothes. i think it has what i've been saying to people is you know those things that you bought for Henry Wingata for your weddings, for your special occasions, you know, wear them to go around the corner for a drink now. Yeah. But I think that what one would hope is that people will, I think people are starting to think a bit longer and a bit harder because of sustainability, about what they have in their wardrobes and maybe how they can use those things differently. So if you've got some dress which was, you know, savings for a special occasion, you put it on with a pair of plimsolls. Yeah. And, and a little leather jacket. You can transform it and yes. you can wear it for something less formal. Yeah. And so I hope that maybe people are being a little bit more ingenious and yes. maybe by wearing this. things a bit more. Yeah, I hope so. Because as you've just said dress up, dress, dress down. Yeah, dress up, mm. dress down. Just think about that item and think what you other things in your wardrobe you can wear it with. Um, somebody once said to me when you put an item away, maybe put it on a hang up with a different something they always it, say to, put it facing the yeah, other way so that you know you've worn it but then also yeah. um style it um then and there as a different outfit so that when you next think to take that you think oh yes i absolutely know, because and otherwise shows on your phone yeah you, because you, yeah. you sometimes dress in a hurry mm. or we're all busy aren't we but you know now talking about um second hand and all of that i mean do you think that there is going to be I mean people have thought a lot more about the climate about the environment about you know uh, people's uh, uh, minimum wages all these things have come out during lockdown and because we've all had more time we've probably taken them on board a lot more we noticed during lockdown that you know the air was much cleaner we weren't getting the respiratory problems apart from obviously COVID which was sort of ironic really that that was not a respiratory disease and yet we had cleaner air and we were feeling better about breathing but do you think that people are going to um look more at second-hand sites or uh or hiring that was a big before we yeah. went to lockdown i it wrote was just about starting. renting it was just starting I, I, I could never really i was just starting to get my head around it but i think now i think that's a bit more difficult now because, yeah, because of, of, the, of, of, of keeping of it virus free keeping yeah. it virus free but i think that people people really are thinking twice about where they shop. Also, people are looking for bargains. Yep. You know, well, there's, there, who knows what the future holds for any of us financially. Yes. And so people are looking for for bargains. And um, I think also, post-COVID, so many people have had the most enormous clear-ups yes. that the, the, the charity shops, shops can't are the take most it. fantastic But they, they're, they're actually okay. putting so notices up, we can't, can't take it anymore. anymore. No, um, no. And so I think in terms of the, the charity shops and the, the second-hand sites, I think that the people are thinking twice. But I think there, there will always be um, the, the maybe some of the younger people who have less disposable income and who are desperate for something for Friday night. Yep. Thursday night at just before the shop shut at home. But it will go out and buy the fast fashion. Um, and and it, it will always it will always be there. It's not going to disappear. But I think maybe our generation are thinking a bit longer term, sort of buy less, buy well, and use accessories. Yes, but I also I what you said about the younger generation, I actually think that there's the sort of the eighteen to twenty-five year old 
um, who's actually really conscious of the environment and is really into the second-hand uh, vintage and mm. my youngest son's just set up a website uh, I'm gonna give you. it a plug Isuko E S double O-K-O good for Might him. as well and it's and it is all this um, yeah. second and and the way that they they market it with the all these uh, social influences mm. uh, yeah, I, I, I take that on board actually when you think about it. I mean I think there are two kind of groups yes aren't they? of course those that do that don't I have two daughters and one of them buys second hand all the time yeah. and the other one frankly would just turn her nose off. Yeah. she would uh, rather yes. you know no. go naked really <laughs> <laughs> Just what not? No. <laughs> I know I can. I can. I haven't that's got two daughters. So I can relate to that. Just so yeah. different, you know. But um, it, but I think there is a big feeling of vintage, this vintage uh, mm. clothing. I mean, my son gets a lot of it from Italy before you know lockdown mm. of the, these warehouses of <gasps> this. I mean, he was bringing in this stuff, and it was like Armani jackets, and uh, there was a Givenchy evening coat. And I was like, really, it's beautiful. Mm obviously been very loved mm, and looked after the Italians do. yeah and they do yeah, and you know anyway so and also of course sustainability we are sitting here a few days after Princess Beatrice got married in her and in this wonderful gorgeous dress that was yes. refurbished and refashioned upcycled and quite simply upcycled yes. when you looked at it it was really simply puff sleeves that's right and I'm sure they did it so well some of the jewels that might have been coming loose or whatever. Because it was in a, it was an exhibition that absolutely. dress apparently had been... And, and yeah. so, you know, the perfect example, perfect really, example and of sustainability. And you know, it's really interesting. How many brides-to-be now, I wonder, will be thinking about that That's, yes. and asking their mums and their grandmas and where their wedding dresses are? But what I thought was interesting is... is Following, okay, there weren't very many pictures of her wedding dress. Uh, there have been about four or six of them. But normally, after a royal wedding, you get all those style experts mm. who come in and uh, they don't criticise, but they certainly sort of yeah. dissect. Yeah. Dissect. But dissect. not one no. on this. No. Wouldn't they, they wouldn't dare, would no, they, they say, that but because also, it's the Queen's I, dress? But I also don't think anyone... I think so everyone was so impressed yeah and it was just so beautiful yeah and you know and it said so much for, but I think it's it will be fascinating now there will be a trend everyone will be grandma where's yeah. your wedding dress yeah, exactly. you know yeah, so I know. they should All so they you know big tick yeah. for sustainability and yeah exactly you know, not going I don't in. think I got uh, married in red velvet so I don't think my girls will I be after that I had two them. wedding dresses I this was the same wedding um, I had one and it was in those days when it was like you were like it was like a, a custard cream sort of big cake thing terribly expensive and I was 30 something when I got married the first time and about oh, three weeks before the wedding I can't wear that I can't <laughs> wear that you know it's ridiculous and so I bought an Anna Sui from Liberty which was much plainer and afterwards I wish I'd worn the, the fondant well I, I we won't discuss it now but I work for David and Elizabeth Emanuel for many many years so I know all about you know wedding dresses oh wow <laughs> and horrors yes and every, changes of oh, mind oh changes of mind and you know clients who dyed their hair a week before the wedding so the colour they'd chosen was just so wrong and oh it all had to be changed Anyway, anyway, there anyway, we go. There so, we go. Uh, what I wanted to ask you, because you're more in touch with this sort of thing, um, I mean, I noticed today in the press, M&S are uh, losing lost staff, um, very sadly, um, and bef long ago they announced they were going to be uh, teaming up with the Cardo, and they're going to be selling their clothes too through. You can order clothes yeah. and get delivered by Ocado, which I find is really strange. Sort of, I just can't get my head around that, you know. Uh, you're ordering your your, mm. your milk and your butter and things, and you're mm. looking at, you know. Anyway, whatever. But do you think that the fashion industry? I read somewhere that the fashion industry, uh, sort of certain heads of fashion houses, have met and thought about their timings. I mean, you know, that we have winter coats in the shop in July, and whether they're all going to do smaller um, I so. light runs and... Um, I think they will. I mean, basically, I think what, what this whole episode in inverted commas has taught us is that the future is very uncertain. Yeah. And what's happened is that, that designers have lost 
so much money because they do these you know twice a year seasonal huge 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 runs and huge collections and people have bought huge collections and just have not sold them no and you know what with climate change and the economic climate and um, you know people's lifestyles changing so much I think what they will do and I, I read that too and I think they will it will be much more buying for the season buying in the now yeah, I sort hope of, so you know, Four, maybe four or five drops a year yeah, and I buying so. in the now rather than buying or you know buying for whenever that you know if you if you buy in February at, at, at a show you're buying for the next spring or summer or whatever you know um, because there are some even some online um, shops I think it's uh, Kitchery yeah. that they are you, um, you go onto their website and you can order yeah, pre-order pre-order an item so they're only making yes. to yeah. order as such which I think that's another... Well, there great. must be, and also there must be bales and bales. Well, there is. I put a thing up about um, some of the designers making face masks. Yeah. Because, and making face masks because to match their dresses. Yeah, because because they, they had all that fabric yeah. left over. Yeah. You know, and, um, and interesting with some of the retailers, some of the small shops, I was talking to one of our local retailers who buys in small numbers and doesn't buy whole collections. And, and her clothes will kind of see you through the seasons. And she said that has that's really been very useful and has saved her yeah. because she has had a whole load of stock which is totally this season yeah. and totally this season's look. And I think you know, if we do that in our own wardrobes, it's not a bad idea. So final question, Maggie. Do you think that our age group are now going to embrace online shopping? I think... Oh, we will embrace online shopping more than we did. However, I think we will still love to do the real thing. And we've been doing it for so long, haven't we? Yeah. We've been doing it for so long. And I think of like my mum, you know, when, when, when I was brought up going into a shop and doing this to see with a piece yeah, of yeah, fabric yeah. to see if it creased. I've just got something that I bought online today. Yeah. I won't say where from. Took it out of the bag, totally disappointed. It was not the fabric I thought it was going to be. So I think, I hope we will do a bit of both. Yeah, I, the only thing that I would say, that I always say to um, our readers, is that with online shopping, you can bring it home, you know, you, you get it delivered yeah. to home, and you can try it on with yes. all your accessories, your back, and, and that has can make your mind up about something. Yes. If you think to yourself, actually, I haven't got any shoes to wear with this, nothing goes, so I'm either going to have to buy more Absolutely. or, quite frankly, yeah. not do without them. Yeah. So there is, and for some people um, that don't like that I intimidation, think... and now with the worry of, I, I do think that there's a lot to be said for online shopping. I'm just saying, as you said, let's try and do a bit of both. But for those who are timid, I don't blame them. And if they have got health issues and things I like that. So. And if people are body conscious as well, you know, um, I, yeah, I have people. clients who sometimes we don't, they, they won't try on. They will take the things, they will shop in a shop, but then take the things home and try them on. Yeah. And take them back because they don't fit because... They, they, they don't want to no, try them in the shop and that's very valid and we're all different yes exactly um, and I think it gives you also time to think of it yeah and also you know? I often ask my husband do what do you think and he will often he's quite good now actually he'll often say to me I like it but I prefer that other you know whatever it was and you think to yourself there's that risk isn't there that you you tend up but tend to buy things sort of on a theme you know mm -hmm. uh, variations yes. of a theme um, you know you might end up with six navy blue sweaters and think, Why don't? you know of course you don't yes. but you do that is your mindset because you know that that suits you so you right and he was and I'll suddenly think yeah you're right I do prefer that other thing mm -hmm. so every time I want to go to something probably similar mm -hmm. I'll choose the other thing yeah. so what's the point so it does make I you... I think so. It makes you think. And you've got it there. And you can think about it, mull it over. And actually, sending back is so easy these days, isn't it? So we've decided, haven't we, Maggie, that lockdown has had its advantages. It's made us Absolutely. rethink our shopping experiences yeah. and what we're doing. Yeah. So let, this is the end of part one. And if you haven't been bored rigid by us, we're now going to do a second part. And we're going to... I'm going to quiz Maggie 
on her styling for women of our age because that's her real true forte and so I, I know we're going to get some good tips.